The story starts in a small village in the province of Castellan. The local team named Villarreal was playing for promotion to the first division. Villarreal played two matches against SD Compostela, 17th in the first division. The first leg at El Madrigal finished in a 0-0 draw, and the second leg was a 1-1 draw in Santiago in such an important game in the history of the club. Villarreal were promoted to La Liga for the first time via the playoff. Villarreal's first La Liga match was away to reigning European champions Real Madrid at the Santiago Bernabeu Stadium on August 31, 1998. And after a hard season in their first La Liga season they were relegated to the Segunda Division at the end of 1998-99. But the president Roig and his team decided not to give up and by finishing third, they were then promoted back to the first division. And the next coming years Villarreal decided to show themselves to the world. Fernando Roig started his big plan by buying some talented players. Names like a 19 years old Spanish guy named Cazorla, a player who played for few Brazilian teams called Marco Senna, and the Argentinian goalscorer Martin Palermo coming from Boca Juniors. A shock 7th place finish in 2001 was a sign of what was to come for Villarreal, but they finished 15th in each of the next two seasons. They lost 2-1 on aggregate to Malaga in the finals of the 2002 UEFA Intertoto Cup. However, in 2003, they beat Herenveen in the final of that competition to qualify for the UEFA Cup. In 2003-2004, Villarreal reached the semi-finals of the UEFA Cup, losing to eventual winners and local rivals Valencia. However, they retained the UEFA Intertoto Cup in 2004. Speaking of 2003, that year the Yellow Submarines took an unwanted diamond from Barcelona, a 24 Argentinian player called Juan Roman Requelme, his period at FC Barcelona was short due to his fights with the team's coach at that time Luis Van Gaal, which made him end up singing for Villarreal. And the rest is history. July 1, 2004 a Chilean coach came from River Plate to take the coaching job in the yellow team, after a few years around mid-table, the opportunity to appoint Pellegrini, a manager with a gleaming reputation that could only be eclipsed by his exceptional qualities as a person, was seen as a step forward. Having won big trophies previously, the appointment was met with optimism. A few signings were made that year, Gonzalo Rodriguez coming from San Lorenzo, and a warrior named Juan Pablo Sorin. But the biggest signing that year was Diego Forlan coming from the Red Devils, after not having a great year in England. Despite not being a success at United, United supporters still sing his name in tribute to the two goals he scored against Liverpool, he came from Uruguay, he made the Scousers cry. With a solid first transfer window, a competitive squad, and the backing of a boss looking to progress as much as possible, Pellegrini enjoyed a historic first season at El Madrigal. Although the ending was magical, they started poorly, and the recovery is a testament to the manager and his squad. They failed to win any of their first five matches, including an opening day defeat to rivals Valencia. Villarreal's form picked up after the Christmas break, winning all their games until February. This run included a famous 3-0 home win over eventual champions Barcelona, and showed the world the true talents of Pellegrini. The Chilean deployed a tight 4-2-2-2 formation, emphasizing defensive work and using the impeccable talents of Marco Senna. Requelme was often deployed down the cutting inside and supplying his forwards. It was no surprise that Forlan scored twice in that game. With the smart management of Pellegrini, who took the squad beyond their capabilities, they qualified to the biggest European competition, the Champions League. One of the most improved players, and arguably the story of the season, was Forlan. The Uruguayan scored 25 goals, winning the Pichichi along the way. The biggest moment of the history of the Yellow Submarine, the Champions League. The first game was in the playoffs against David Moyes Everton, 
who had surprised many by making it this far. The first leg was a tense affair as Luciano Figueroa and Josico's goals cancelled out James Beattie's strike and gave the Spaniards a 2-1 away success. The second leg, however, was full of drama. Despite Villarreal protecting a lead, they didn't sit back and would strike early through Juan Pablo Sorin. Mikel Arteta, on his return to his native country, struck the equalizer for the Merseysiders and soon after that, the drama would begin. Everton would win a corner after Arteta's goal, another for them would level scores on aggregate, cancelling Villarreal's away goal advantage. Duncan Ferguson scored from the corner and ran off to celebrate, but Pierluigi Colina disallowed the goal for a foul by Marcus Bent, the aftermath perhaps took the shine off what was an incredible achievement for Pellegrini and Villarreal. In the group stages, they were drawn against Lille, Benfica and Manchester United. Villarreal continued good in the Champions League, they went undefeated and crawled into the next round, drawing four of their six group games and winning two crucial ones. In the process, they condemned traditional favourites Manchester United to elimination and added another feather to their cap. While their domestic form was stuttering, they were strong in Europe. After winning their group, Villarreal were set for a third return to the UK to face Rangers. In the first leg, Raquelme and Forlan struck important away goals in a 2-2 draw. The advantage was important, as a 1-1 home draw a fortnight later put them through to the quarter-finals. Following the victory over Rangers, Villarreal were drawn against Internazional. They made the perfect start in the first leg in Italy, Forlan scoring within the first minute. But they didn't have the lead for long as Adriano equalized moments later, before Obafemi Martin's winner in the second half. The Arsenal awaited them in the semi-final. Colo Ture scored the winner in the first leg. On April 25, 2006, Exactly had dominated the game at Estadio El Madrigal but had yet to break down the Arsenal defence, the Gunners had moved on to the final. And this was the story of the golden generation of Villarreal, a year later most of the great players left the club like Raquelme and Forlan, but the Yellow Submarines always have been a team who made changes and after 15 years from Raquelme's penalty they got their first trophy, the Europa League title with one of the best coaches in the history of the club Don Unai Emery, Ladies and gentlemen hope you liked the video. Subscribe on my small channel, show some love and support.